in this video I will show you how to uh, interface an Arduino board with uh, with a fairly cheap uh, Ethernet module. Uh, the module used in this uh, video is based on ENC28J chip. Um, it's very very inexpensive. Um, in the past I used uh, Bluetooth uh, modules uh, for communicating with uh, with the Arduino board, uh, but now I decided to just switch to um, to Ethernet because it allows to well control um, control your projects using any web browser, uh, any mobile device. Uh, here I even created an app that uh, well mm, can uh, control LEDs an on. LED. LEDs off as well as uh, receive uh, sensor values from the Arduino well 25 comma yes. 5 6 degrees centigrade mm -hmm. so uh, it allows a two-way uh, communication uh, the module you see uh, here is um, is uh, based on uh, on the ENC 28J chip, and uh, well, it's not the standard um, Arduino Ethernet uh, shield. Um, the standard one uses um, the WizNet chip. It's slightly more capable, but uh, it's also more expensive. It's about four times as expensive as uh, as uh, these modules. Uh, because they are so uh, cheap, uh, well, you might as well, um, well, include them in your projects. And uh, well, um, since they are so cheap, uh, well, you can buy just another one. Um, well, um, hmm, what else? Uh, one problem with uh, with the modules is that they um, cannot use the standard library. Uh, in fact, uh, the most commonly used uh, library for for these they mm, they have special libraries is uh, very um, uh, well I should say um, difficult to use yeah. even if you are mm, quite uh, quite advanced. Uh, but uh, luckily, I found uh, uh, a much better library on uh, Trollmaker.com. It's almost as easy to use as the standard Arduino library. Um, I will add a link in the in the video for you to uh, download it, as well as in the video description. So, uh, well, um, I will describe uh, how to um, connect uh, the module. It uses the SPI bus, um, and I will also show you uh, the circuit used right here. So. Uh, you will be able to switch an LED on and off, uh, well, and uh, as well as um, check the temperature using uh, uh, DS18B20 uh, temperature sensor. Uh, I will also explain um, well the sketch itself and how to use the library and some of its functions. And uh, what's more, mm, I will show you. That uh, well, that it works using any browser, and then I will discuss how to uh, create um, an app such as this one, step by step. Now, wiring. As I said earlier, uh, the module uses uh, the SPI bus, and here are the pins on the on the module and the corresponding pins uh, on the Arduino board. And you can either use uh, uh, the SPI pins uh, such as digital 10, 11, 12, and 13, or you can uh, well use the same uh, pins uh, doubled as the mm, ICSP connector. Uh, here we have uh, well the part of the circuit uh, responsible for uh, getting data from the uh, from the temperature sensor and here is the LED. Uh, what's more, uh, the Ethernet module runs on 3.3 uh, volts, uh, not 5 volts, 
but uh, the rest of the pins is 5 volt tolerant so that doesn't require any level shifting. Uh, the modules require a special uh, special library uh, and the most popular one, uh, the most uh, commonly used one is uh, this one but uh, it isn't very easy to use. I found a much better one on trollmaker.com uh, and uh, the library itself is in fact two separate libraries uh, if you experience any uh, problems with using them uh, try to get rid of the of this character from the folder name as I did uh, and uh, well if you do it if you get any error messages uh, and you remove it it should work now um, that's the library now let's discuss uh, the sketch itself as you can see you have to include both of the libraries uh, as well as here is a library for for the digital temperature sensor uh, and the first uh, important part is uh, uh, is here here we define the MAC address of the uh, of the module it has to be uh, unique for your network here is the IP address again it has to be unique uh, here is the port here I initialized uh, a serial port for um, for troubleshooting of the temperature sensor. Um, what else? Oh, here is a variable um, that uh, that is used to start uh, the response you get from the client. Mm. So when the server uh, when the client connects to the server, uh, it sends them uh, parameters and they are stored in this variable. Here we have uh, e.print and uh, that's, that works more or less like uh, mm, serial print, so you just add uh, text here. You also have here HTML tags here is uh, the temperature, I mean the first part of the temperature, so let's say 17.5 is divided into 17 point or comma 5. And that's because float values cannot be um, well printed uh, or they can be uh, printed but uh, that would require uh, a special function that uh, changes float values into strings and uh, that uh, uses up too much uh, memory so I decided to um, well write a couple of lines of code that do the same but uh, use up less memory uh, here is an interesting part of the uh, of the web page that the server creates uh, it's a link when you click the link uh, you get this um, command off and uh, here uh, we check whether the um, the variable is the same as uh, well, what we have here. If it's the same, then the output pin goes uh, high, so the LED is on, and the server then prints uh, that the LED is in fact on. This is the same, but for switching off the LED. And uh, here it sends the response to the client, and then we have a delay. This part right here, uh, the rest of the code is uh, for the temperature sensor. Okay, now you might be wondering um, whether we'll get any uh, response from the server. Let's see. And as you can see, we get uh, we get the response, so it works. Now, uh, this is the web page, and as you can see here, we have temperature, and uh, here is uh, uh, the first link. This one switches the LED off. This one turns it on. And uh, well, that's all as far as uh, the sketch in the library is concerned. Uh, now we'll discuss 
uh, App Inventor. App Inventor uh, is uh, is very nice because it uh, doesn't require uh, any coding skills. Well, it requires coding skills, but you don't need to know any programming language to to use it. And in fact, you just uh, arrange blocks uh, and add them to uh, well uh, design an app. Okay, uh, when you um, this is the first window you will see. Uh, here you can create a new project um, and you can also uh, download source file of your app and upload a source file. Um, uh, the source file is for well modifying the app. You can uh, uh, share your app uh, with someone and then he can uh, modify it. And that's what I usually do. I um, download the source files of my apps so that you can uh, modify them yourself. You don't have to start from scratch. Uh, the app uh, that I showed you uh, earlier is uh, uh, is uh, well, where is it? Oh yes, here it is. Uh, here we have a uh, some kind of uh, WizWig interface. It shows you what the app uh, looks like. Uh, what what's the inf interface looks like? Uh, here we add uh, some elements to it. All of them are mm, well come with a description, so you know how to how to use them. And here we have all the components. Uh, so this is the first button, the second one, the third. Here we have a label which isn't visible at the moment because it's uh, well. I. Uh, made it hidden for a reason. Here we have a checkbox uh, when you um, when you check it uh, and uh, the label becomes visible and it displays the response you get from the server so that can be used for um, debugging. Here is a button that uh, opens up uh, a web page uh, that's my profile on Instructables that's where you could you you will get uh, well, uh, the source file of the app as well as the app itself. Now, um, the other part of the of App Inventor is uh, the blocks editor. That's where you uh, well edit what the app does. So when here we have a block when when the button one is clicked, mm, well the app uh, connects to our uh, whatever you had here that's the address of the uh, of the Arduino board and uh, adds this uh, bit uh, to the end of it and that causes the uh, LED to switch on it works the same as uh, as if you click the link on a web page and then it uh, mm, well sends a get uh, request to the server. This button does the same but uh, it switches it off and here uh, here is the button that checks the temperature. Mm, when you click it uh, a variable called uh, temperature changes from false to true and uh, again uh, here we have uh, uh, an HTTP GET request and when we get the request uh, we get the request code, type, and content. And here we have uh, if statements that check whether the the response contains the word uh, the word uh, on. If it does, then uh, the text to speech um, function uh, says LED is on. It's actually that easy to use and uh, the label displays the, the content as well so you can see uh, what the response was. It's the same for for the uh, off command um, oh, and uh, that checks the response you get from the server. Let's get back to the sketch itself for a moment. That's what we get from the server. So when the LED is on, 
uh, the server uh, prints this LED is on and the app um, well looks for this uh, response uh, for this word on in the response and uh, then it says that the LED is on um, hmm, what else here we have the temperature when temperature is true and it's only true if we click the, the third button uh, it uh, says the, the temperature it gets the response uh, selects um, mm, well starts from the 21st uh, character in it and uh, and it gets five uh, next characters um, which is the temperature itself then uh, we attach degrees centigrade to it so uh, we get a response such as uh, 19.75 degrees centigrade uh, okay what else uh, here we have a label and uh, we uh, and it displays the response content that's for um, for debugging and uh, here you can see the checkbox that makes the label visible um, and uh, more or less that's that's all oh here we have the last button the one that uh, um, opens up uh, a web page and uh, more or less that's that's all uh, here we have uh, mm, two options we can either use an uh, emulator or you can connect to an Android device uh, when you select uh, this option it displays uh, mm, a QR code for the uh, um, MIT AI companion it's an app you have to download the to the phone and uh, it uh, allows you to um, to display the app you are working on at the moment then if you want to create the app I mean uh, download the app file you click package for phone and you can either download the app to the computer or to the connected phone and uh, well that's all.